Hello, today we'll be concerned with the following question. Why do we define normal subgroups in group theory? Let us recall the definition. Given a group G, its subgroup H is normal if the left coset formed by multiplying by an, by an element G is equal to the right coset for any element G. Turns out that the answer to our question lies in our need to define quotient groups. Roughly speaking, when we want to regard all elements of a given subgroup H as the same, we divide our group G by H. A familiar example would be Z, that of Z mod 2Z. So here's what happens in this group. Here we have integers and we basically glue together or identify all even numbers. So we want to regard them as the same. And since they are the same, they are also the same with zero. So in fact, all of these numbers become zeros to us. So what does this new set look like? What elements can we have? Well, suppose we have some abstract integer m. Well, m is either of the form 2k or 2k plus 1, right? Every integer is either even or odd. But by our identification, 2k is 0, and this guy becomes 0 plus 1 which is 1. So the conclusion that we make is that in Z mod 2Z we essentially have two elements 0 and 1 and by mathematical notation it is uh, more common to write 0 bar 1 bar to symbolize equivalence classes of numbers. So 0 is an equivalence class for even numbers and one is an equivalence class for odd numbers. Now in group theory uh, this is more commonly written in terms of coset notation. So 2z is our subgroup and this is our first element in the group and this is our second element in the group. Notice that I've used the term group for this object as well. But what basis, what guarantees do I have for uh, knowing that it's actually a group? So how do we know if, is it a group? And of course, these elements look strange. So the first thing we need to do is to define the group operation. Now let us do it for a general example. So let H be subgroup of G, then we write that G mod H or G quotient H is a set of such elements where G belongs to G. There is a direct analogy with our concrete example and rather Intuitively, we define g plus h plus, say, g prime plus h. So here I use additive notation for my group. Okay, so I assume that g has uh, this symbol to symbolize group operation. So I define the combination of my elements simply as g plus g prime plus h. So H is always just a tail of my, uh, of my elements and it doesn't actually take part in uh, combining elements. Now, it's a small exercise for you 
to check some basic uh, or in fact all group axioms, please make sure that they are satisfied with the following definition. So you need identity, you need inverses, and so on. But the question we should be concerned with in this video is when is it well-defined? This means that if we have g plus h equals to, say, h plus h and g prime plus h equals h prime plus h, do we have that g plus h plus g prime of h plus h the same as h plus h and h prime plus h. In other words, we want to find a condition under which the following element, or the following set, is the same as this one. And you can obviously see that you, can, you cannot show it straight away without assuming some uh, relation between elements and h. So the reason why we need to check for that is the following. Imagine that I didn't have my cosets here. I just had elements g and g prime equal to h and h prime. Then my relation would become g times g prime or g plus g prime equals to h plus h prime. Now, in the group, that statement is obvious. It's trivial. But here, it is not so. So it turns out that we need h to be a normal subgroup of g. So what you want to prove is that if g plus h equals h plus g for all g and g, then um, this defines a group operation, which is well defined. So I will leave this proof to you. And it is also true, the, the reverse direction is also true. So if you somehow have this operation that's well defined, then your group H is necessarily normal. So try to prove that as well. So now, as I promised, we will talk a bit about ideals. Ideal is a concept that's defined for rings. So make sure you're familiar with a bit of ring theory. But roughly speaking, a ring is a set that has not one binary operation defined on it, but two, which is additive and multiplicative. And it uh, satisfies axioms that are similar to that of a, of a group. Given a ring R and its subring A, uh, we define R quotient A as the following set. Just like we did with quotient groups. And again, the natural question is when is R quotient A a ring? So again, we need to define operations. 
and we define them in a similar manner. So if we want to add two cosets or co-rings, in fact, um, we will write that. And if we want to multiply two elements from a quotient uh, ring, we will just multiply the two elements as well and add an A. So it turns out that these operations define a ring if and only a if A is an ideal of R. And the definition is the following. A is an ideal of R if A is a subring of R. And secondly, for every R in our ring and for every A in our subring, we must have that RA and AR are both inside A. So all this looks somehow similar to the notion of a normal subgroup. So for your future reference, remember that normal, the concept of normal subgroup is defined for quotient subgroups. And its brother in the field of algebra, in the field of rings, ideal, is defined for quotient rings. So these two concepts are similar, but they're defined for different structures. One is a group and one is a ring. And here is a general intuition that you should remember um, long term when you do algebra.